Continuing here with uh, optimization techniques, we've already seen how to adjust the shadow casting flags for objects in our scene on a per object basis. Now let's have a look at uh, adjusting some other things to squeeze out some more performance. So if I come out here and I look at my scene, if you remember I talked about the kind of argument between vertex lit and pixel lit shaders. Pixel shaders being the most advanced and nicer looking ones but harder to render and the vertex shaders being quick to render but they're pretty ugly they don't look very very nice so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this scene and we're gonna decide okay which objects here should have pixel shaders and which ones are vertex shaders because if I go example to say or let me actually use another object as an example let's say these support columns right here they're using a bump specular shader which is a pixel based shader if I go to a vertex lit shader, they're going to look like this. Now, it doesn't look too horribly bad, but it doesn't look too great either. But in this case, it actually doesn't look too bad. But if I look closely, I don't have specularity anymore, and I've lost my normal mapping. So my bump map is now gone. So that may be what you don't want to do. So I'm going to switch that back to a bump specular shader, pixel shader pretty much, and it looks good. So you gotta have to be careful about that and decide which objects uh, deserve a pixel shader and which ones deserve a vertex shader. If you look at these background buildings over here, they're not really important and we're never going to be close to them. So let's see if we can do that. That's a diffuse shader, so let's switch over to a vertex lit. And that actually didn't make much of a difference in terms of quality, but it is going to make a difference in terms of rendering speed and performance. So I'm going to switch all those background buildings to vertex lit. So the idea is to kind of go around and see which objects should have a vertex lit shader and which ones should have a pixel lit shader. So let's try vertex lit on this. That actually looks pretty good. So um, switching from complex pixel shaders to vertex shaders on some objects can help you squeeze out a little bit more performance. Okay, so uh, the next thing is texture resolution. Texture resolution is extremely important, okay? For example, if I look at say these bricks on the floor okay these are small details are kind of environment props they look pretty decent close up but chances are the player while he's playing a game and he's you know shooting at bad guys and bad guys are shooting at him they're never gonna stop and really sit here and look and zoom in with a scope on the rifle and go hey let's see how these uh, textures are looking over here I mean some people do that I tend to do that when I play games but that's because I'm a developer you notice that right now the texture max size is 1K. That's a little bit big for a simple little detail like this. So instead what I might want to do is change that max texture size to something else. And the idea is to kind of go down these sizes until you find a size that's small but looks decent enough. So if I go to something like 32 for example and hit apply, it's not going to look too good. Uh, it looks pretty bad. So instead of 1024 I might want to try 512. That looks pretty good. Then maybe knock it down to 256 that still looks pretty good so maybe I can get down to 128 and I'm gonna go back to this object I'm gonna take its bump map because the normal map is also 1k so we have two textures working on one object we've got the 1k diffuse map and we've got the 1k normal map maybe I'll knock down the normal map to 256 and I mean that doesn't look that good but it is a small object that's not really that important maybe I'll keep it at 512 and you know what maybe I'll go back to the texture and I'm just being picky now but maybe I'll make the texture 256 instead. That looks pretty good. So I got a pretty good balance of the quality as well as the small texture size. If you go to these debris mounds over here, okay, we look at the texture. Texture's 1K. So the idea is to kind of go around your scene and play around with your textures and try to find a good balance between the smallest texture size possible while not compromising your quality too much. So objects like these over here, for example, these little ball box objects right here, you might want to take the textures on these objects. And they're 1K. That doesn't need to be 1K. Let's knock that down to 256. Still looks good inside of our scene, but uh, we're saving ourselves some texture memory. Okay? okay, before I continue with that, another thing I want to look at is if I go to the Edit menu and I go to Project Settings, I can choose Quality over here, and that's going to open up the Quality Settings that we've actually seen before in this tutorial. Uh, in a previous video. If I go to the fantastic settings I have some adjustments that I can make. The pixel light count we can leave it at a default of 4. This used to be a pretty big factor before Unity 3.0 
not really anymore so leaving it at a setting of 4 will work out just fine because the deferred rendering system works out pretty good for us so we don't really have to change that uh, for shadows we can choose hard and soft shadows or we can disable shadows completely we obviously don't want to do that because you can see how our scene looks if we turn on hard shadows only we're gonna have just hard shadows I want to have hard and soft shadows so I'll leave that alone the shadow resolution we have the ability to change the shadow resolution in the entire scene so we can set it to low okay that's gonna give us better performance but the shadows are not gonna look that great we can go with medium which is gonna kinda of give us a uh, kinda of medium uh, quality there or we can go with high um, this is an, again a judgment call it depends on what kind of performance you're getting I'm gonna put it at medium because medium actually looks pretty decent if I do some more play testing the shadows look really bad I might change that but I, I'll be honest with you medium looks pretty good I don't think I need to have high shadows on this but again as I do play testing I'll check it out and if it becomes a real really big issue then I'll um, I'll address it then shadow cascades uh, if I set this to no cascades you'll notice that the shadows coming from the sunlight are pretty much ruined setting that the two cascades looks better but still doesn't look that great four cascades is the best setting I'm gonna keep it like that looks best uh, shadow distance right now it's at the 300 basically if I take this down really low to something like 50 which is pretty exaggerated you can see as I increase and decrease this the shadows get closer and far away from the camera okay so you want to be careful with this um, I like leaving this at a pretty high setting for my scene 300 is high enough obviously if you reduce that the shadows are going to look bad but um, you're going to get better performance so that's how that works the texture quality down here I can actually set texture quality for everything and what this does is it downgrades the texture resolution so full res means it's going to leave everything alone but if I set it to half res you notice that the textures in my scene kind of uh, diminished in quality just a little bit because they're half resolution now but um, I get much better performance so my texture sizes were pretty much reduced for everything in my scene so if you don't want to go into your scene and manually go to like say for example all these textures over here and take the max size down one by one and you want to kind of do it to your entire scene in one shot because it's faster even though it gives you less control you can just go to those quality settings and set the texture quality to half res and it's going to basically cut all the texture resolutions in half so textures that are 1k will become 512 textures that were 512 become 256 I think you get the idea um, we have anisotropic textures this is forced on by default on the fantastic quality settings what this does is let me just show you here have a look at the floor texture especially the area around here by the crates look at this area right here okay pay attention to that spot when I take off my anisotropic uh, texturing do you see what happens basically textures that are at kind of a glancing angle toward the camera are going to become blurry right there what anisotropic uh, filtering does is it fixes that blurring and makes the textures more crisp and more detailed when you're looking at glancing angles with the camera okay anti-aliasing of course is going to get rid of the jagged edges and the corners of objects so if you have 2x uh, anti-aliasing it's going to give us some pretty decent anti-aliasing but not the best obviously 16x will look the best but it's going to use up the most performance I'm going to go with something like 4x will probably look pretty good give me a good balance of performance speed and quality okay again this texture quality setting set the half res we've already seen what it does I'm gonna set it to full res and here's what I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have I'm gonna give myself full control of texture resolution so I'm gonna go into objects one by one and take the texture resolutions and reduce them as I see fit so for example for these support beams right here these pillars I want the texture resolution to be 1k pretty high because that's a pretty detailed object you're going to be looking at pretty constantly and pretty close up but objects like these little drains on the floor right here we don't need 1k textures on that stuff so I'm going to take stuff like that and knock it down to maybe 128 and you can see there's very little difference inside the viewport here let me go to the butt map and I'm going to take that and knock that down to maybe 128 as well and you could still you could see it still looks really good inside of our view so we were wasting a lot of texture resolution on something that didn't need it um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna reduce the texture uh, sizes for a lot of stuff that doesn't need it so these drains in the floor don't need big textures 
So go to these different objects in your scene, these different textures, and knock down the texture resolutions of stuff that doesn't need high-res textures, and keep high-res textures on stuff that doesn't need it, like the floor, for example. So I think you get the pattern here. Take away texture resolution for things that are not important, and keep texture resolution for things that are very important. So when you do that, run another performance test and see what kind of uh, performance you can get. And uh, try to squeeze as much performance as you can using the techniques that I've shown you.